Every Christmas season, we see a variety of sweatshirts, cards, and signs announcing that Jesus is the reason for the season. And for those who follow Jesus, well, that can be a good clarifying statement, even inspiring. I think it began as a response to what some Christians perceived as the commercialization or even the over santification of Christmas. It's a good reminder, unless it's used as a weapon against Santa lovers and elf on the shelfers. You know, sometimes our passion to make a point can separate us from the very people for whom Jesus could become their reason for living. This is also the season for Hallmark and Lifetime Christmas movies. And they all tell a, this predictable story and present a touching scenario about the Christmas spirit. With this sentiment by one of the main characters, somebody always says, now this is what Christmas is all about. And this, well, that can mean children or family or giving or whatever. You know, there are a lot of opinions about what the true meaning of Christmas is and what the perfect Christmas should look like. And some opinions can be polarizing. I've seen some angry Santas and I've seen some angry shepherds. Now, let's throw this into the mix. What if we are the reason for the season? Let's use Colossians 1.16 as a backdrop. It refers to Jesus as the sovereign creator and initiator. It says, For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. However, there's a big problem. You see, when sin entered the world, Everything was twisted and broken beyond repair. So mankind is now lost and cut off from God. And our best efforts to fix things when compared to His holiness are like filthy rags. Romans 3, 10 through 12 describes the hopelessness of our predicament this way. It says, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. You see, all things have been created through Him and for Him, but mankind needs a Savior. So because of us, God initiated the greatest rescue of all time. An angel made this big announcement to a group of shepherds one night who were out in a field watching over their flock. Now, this is a familiar part of the, of the Christmas story in Luke chapter two. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. I think most people can appreciate the rustic simplicity of a baby lying in a manger. This non-threatening nativity scene featuring the babe of Bethlehem. Keeping Jesus in a manger, well, that won't interrupt or interfere with your life. It reminds me of Ricky Bobby in the movie Talladega Nights. You remember, he, prefer, he preferred praying to the baby Jesus. But the angel and the heavenly host clearly reveal that this baby is so much more than that. He cannot be contained in a crib. He is our Savior. He is Christ the Lord. My favorite display that we do in our house at Christmas is a hand-carved nativity that we received as a wedding gift. And then we have a cross that typically stays on one of our nightstands, but at Christmas, we add it to the nativity. 
The cross reminds us that this baby would become a man, and this man would give his life for the sins of the world. Now, that's the why behind the what of Christmas. We need a Savior. So, to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So, we are the reason he was born. We are the reason he died. And we are the reason he rose from the dead. So, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. And you know what? His favor rests on those who put their faith, not in the Christmas spirit, but they put their faith in Jesus. And I think that's a very good reason to say, Merry Christmas.